All right, so welcome to the VIP live call number four, right? It's been almost a month that we started to talk about concepts, mindsets, uh, strategies helpful for marketing business and entrepreneurship. So as we talked about it before, I mentioned this book, Persuasion, two weeks ago, and I hope you had got the book, you started reading, uh, part of it at least and today uh, we are going to talk about the main concept of persuasion what is it about and how you can benefit it in marketing now it's very powerful I can say and it has a huge effect on your audience if you do it the right way you get a good result now before I had never ever talked about this concept in my courses anywhere so this is something very new and uh, so let's before we begin talking about the persuasion let's uh, see from where it came now the book persuasion is written by dr robert cialdini i hope you know the guy he is uh, one of the most uh, amazing person in uh, this field uh, he's extremely knowledgeable his previous book which we talked about it before in most of my courses is influence inside influence book he talked about I think about five or six marketing cognitive bias and we use a lot of tips from that book and we talked about it a lot inside the courses that we had before so if you have any question if you have read the book leave a comment what's what do you think about it if you have any question before we begin write your questions uh, either inside youtube or in my website and uh, after talking about it we will begin the book persuasion it's very powerful very amazing and i'm sure you're going to enjoy what we are going to talk about in this session so let me check out the comments if of course there's a little delay here so I will be waiting for it and let me check here as well right okay right so also I'm so glad that uh, most of you are joining this live calls um, I know maybe for some of you the time is not right maybe you have other things to do it's difficult usually but coming live talking about things that are going to help you in the long run it's going to be very powerful and very helpful for your business and it's not something that everybody do so you are one step ahead of other people in your own field and sorry about it in your own field in your niche and this can be a good thing for you right so let's check the comments and if no one has any question, let's begin. So, the concept of persuasion is, well, till now we talked about strategies to convince people, All right? They come to the landing page or you see them, first talk about this strategy, then use this strategy, then use this one. For example, if you're familiar with cognitive biases, we said that, all right, when you want to convince someone, talk about the reward, right? reward of using that product for example the reward of you being inside this life call is that you will learn a lot of amazing and useful stuff for your business right the reward that for example i use this marker maybe it will last longer right it can be a good reward for me as a user okay i can use it a lot for for example a couple of months and it still works right the other one it didn't last much okay so reward in general is this now till now before we talked about these strategies that for example uh, i want to make it clear for you so you don't become confused when we get to persuasion okay let's say this is a landing page and you have a product inside it well you start with a good title maybe a video uh, and you talk about features 
and call to action, right? What persuasion is talking about is going before people get to your landing page, before you start speaking with people and try using uh, cognitive biases or other strategies to convince them. As the name of it here exists, pre, it's the environment, the features, elements around uh, the place that we have or before that, that will convince, that prepare the listener to get convinced. I know that it may sound a little bit confusing right now. When we make some examples, you will get it better, right? So, for example, let's say this is your landing page. The environment, the design, the background, whatever is inside that landing page, before the audience start reading and take a look at the videos and uh, the features there, all the environment around it is going to affect on how you're going to convince your listener. Now, it's very amazing. We're going to get back to the reward in a moment and use it for better persuasion. Now, for example, let's say I want you to fill a survey for me, right? I want to create something. I want you to fill a survey. Now, if I just normally come and say that, hey, for example, I have a survey about a marketing course. Do you have, for example, four minutes, three minutes, 10 minutes to fill it for me and provide this information so later I can provide a better product for you? Okay, this is something normal, right? This is something that uh, I do it, I have done it before, but without using persuasion. Now, how I want, how I can use persuasion here in this example, before saying anything, I can come and ask you, do you consider yourself a helpful person? Now, your focus, you start to pay attention on that, all right, am I a helpful person or not? Am I a help, helpful person or not? So you start to think about that. Now, when you think about something, we get to this point in a minute. When you start to pay attention to something, it becomes more important, more important. When it is more important, I can use it to convince you, right? So this way I can increase the, the number of people who feed my survey with just asking a simple question. So um, the whole concept here is that uh, it's not just about local. It's not just about online business. You can do it anywhere. It's not just about even selling. It's about, you can use persuasion in any topic. Let's say you have a store, okay? Local store and you're selling something. Whatever you use inside the store to show uh, to your customer, to your audience, it can be color, it can be images, it can be a sentence, a quote on the wall, right? Anything that you use there, it can put them in the right mindset. Put your audience in the right mindset, okay? So the whole persuasion concept is to put your audience in the right mindset. In a minute we get it how you can do this. With more example also you get the concept much better. Now if it's still uh, regarding what we had talked about till now, you have any question, you can write it down for me and I will take a look at it. Okay, we have a couple of questions here. Great to see you, thank you for the invitation. I was unable to join the live call. How can I access the recording please? Well, I see the question, but the video is available. If you are listening to me, it means you're watching it. So, before we get to the next part that how you can apply this, I want you to think about what you have, okay? About the situation that you are in in your business. So we have a quick assignment, right? We have a quick assignment here 
that will help you to get the idea much better. So, what is the thing that you are trying to convince your audience of? For example, right now you are working on a product, right now you are selling a product maybe, or you have some something in your mind, or if not, think about the elements around you. For example, you want to sell a marker, right? This can be your example. Think about it, come up with a product, something that you want to sell, for example. If you, talk, if you think about a product, it will help you easier to understand the concept. After that, what is the thing? So let me write the first one here. What is your product? Okay, this is number one for that sign. Number two, what was it? Okay, what is the thing that you can put before to put your audience in the right mindset? Okay, what? is the thing you can put before, right? So, I want to sell, let's say, this marker, right? I'm just making an example so we get it better. I'm going to sell this marker. I want to sell this marker. This is my product, right? Now, what I can do before I start talking with you, before I show you uh, the features, the reward, before all of this, for example, let's say this marker lasts long, or let's change the product. For example, I have a coat jacket here, okay? I want, this is my product. I want to sell this jacket to you, right? Now, one of the benefits, one of the rewards of using this jacket, for example, it is warm, right? It is very warm. It keeps you warm in winter, right? So this is one of the rewards of using the product, this product. Now, how I can put you into the right mindset to pay attention to this feature? For example, if I'm selling this product online, I can show elements, show an image maybe, in the background that direct you toward paying attention that the product that you want to buy should be warm, right? I can, for example, show images of fire in the middle of, for example, winter, snow, ice, right? This can grab your attention, okay? Let's say I want to sell this product to you locally. You are in my store and I have this jacket. And before I start talking about the jacket or if before even you want to pay attention to the product itself, I can just tell you a simple sentence. I can say, for example, do you know this winter is going to be one of the, co one of the most cold winters during the past couple of years? Now, immediately when I say this sentence to you, you start to think that, all right, I must buy something or I must think about a solution to be warm during the winter. Now you see the product. Now you mostly start to pay attention to this feature because I put it inside your head, right? So what I want you to do right now as an assignment, think about the product and what can you put before that? I will give you two, three minutes. I will mute the microphone and take a look at the questions and the comments that you left. Think about it right now. Leave it as a comment. We will discuss it. Or if you have a question about the product, you can write it. For example, what, this is my product, but I don't know what to do with it. We can talk about it here together. After that, we are going to um, speak about a couple of more examples and more strategies that how you can apply persuasion. It's, I understand, it's, it can be a little bit confusing. At the beginning it was for me as well. But the more examples we make, the more practice we do, it will get easier and better for you to understand, right? So, 
um, do the assignments in two, three minutes, we will continue our live call, all right? Let me move the microphone. Right, I'm still waiting for your comments. Now one thing I tell you, these assignments is for you to learn better, to have a better learning experience. So I know the topic. If we have a practice and exercise, it's for yourself, okay? So try to do the assignments step by step, come with me so you can learn these things better, right? So let's look at here to see. Okay. Boom, boom. All right. I will take a look at it uh, after making these examples. So. Um, there was another ex another test done using this theory. Let's go to the next page. There was a, there was a, a company selling sofa. Okay. Now they created two different landing pages well they were similar but the background was different so in one of them they showed clouds in the background okay in the other one they started to show for example pennies coins okay let me write it coins clouds okay as a background image, right? Above it, they had their text, for example, they had their video, they had, for example, the call to action, and so on. This was the background. Now, the result was that the page that had the cloud in the background, people, customers, mostly focused on the sofas that were more soft, okay? Soft product. They focused on being soft. But the people here who came to this landing page, they bought the products where, which were cheaper, okay? All only because of the background that existed in the landing page. So this is another example of persuasion. Now, at the beginning of the live call, I mentioned something. 
I mentioned reward. This is your product, okay, which it has a reward. All right. Now, how you sh how you can do this? How you can be more successful at persuasion? Okay. So right now we are going to talk about that. So the most you have to do it reverse engineer. You have to start from your product and understanding what is the reward of using the product. After you get that, for example, about the coat, we mentioned that it was war, right? This is the, for example, the strength of my product, right? So I have to focus on the reward that uh, it is war. Now, how I can come up with the idea? So. For this strategy, it says, what is focal? It's causal. Let me write it here. What is focal is causal, okay? It means that what the thing that grab your attention can cause in the decision that you are going to make, right? So here, if I use some elements, um, let me show it right th like this. For example, elements that grab your attention, okay? From elements, you start to pay attention. And from here, you get to the reward, right? So this is how you have to get to the element. Now my reward is that my product is war, okay? So from here, what I can do, how I can pay attention, how I can grab the attention of my client, of my customer, of my audience, right? So, what we talked about it before, we put some images of, for example, fire, maybe to show it's cold, snow, or maybe we can use a sentence, okay, a text right at the beginning, okay, the things that I mentioned, or if it is local, we can say something about it. There was another example that Robert Cialdini make in his book. He says that, for example, let's say you want to go to a job interview, right, and there usually, well, one, ten, five people, they sit down there, they want to ask you questions to see if you are the right fit for the job. Now, the, usually when you go to an interview, when you want to start, you say, right, hey, thank you for inviting me to this interview and I'm glad to be here and I'm ready to answer all of your questions. Okay, this is what something that normally everybody does, right, when they go to the interview. Now, how you can change this? how you can use persuasion, right? Eh? How you can use persuasion here. You can add another sentence to it. Hey, thank you for inviting me here today. I'm ready to answer your questions. But before that, I wanted to ask you, what was the reason that you invited me to this interview? What will happen here? You grab the attention of your listener, direct it toward your strength. Why did they invite me? Okay. Okay. And so on. Okay. Why did you invite me to this interview? So they start to pay attention to the strengths that you had. Yeah, we invited you because you were very good at Photoshop. We saw your resume, for example. We also saw that, for example, you worked at this place. Now, you are put them in the right mindset to choose you, okay, to make that decision. This is how persuasion works in general. So, well, the book has a lot of other things that we cannot talk about all of them inside this live call. 
But in general, I wanted you to pay attention to what we have here, to pay attention to the whole concept because it's important. Now, what you have to do, well, we had an assignment earlier. If you haven't done that, spend some time right now. Think about your product, okay? Think about what, do you, what you have right now and how you can use this concept, how you can create the environment around the product somehow to direct your listener and put them into the right mindset, in the right direction, okay? So this was in general about persuasion. But before we end this live call, I want to talk about two other important things. Now, the first thing that I want to talk about will go back to cognitive biases and business energies. For those of you who haven't watched it yet, please take a look at it. They are very important and powerful. Now, I had an experience a couple of, I think it was last week, a couple of days ago. I went to a place, to a gym. Uh, it was a very high quality, a very big gym and uh, very expensive. The person, the general manager, was he was trying to convince me to join the gym, right? To pay, for example, $1,000 per month per year and join the gym. Now, the thing was that he was doing it more or less the right way. He used a lot of different strategies. But there was a problem there. If you know the four business energies, practical, action, social, um, emotional. Now, accord, we all have these four inside ourselves, but in each of us, one of them is very high. For example, I'm more a practical person. You can be action, some of you can be social, emotional, or again, practical, right? Now, quickly I will explain what are these. Practical people are the people who do things based on plans, okay? For example, I planned this live call from a couple of, from two weeks ago, we know, we knew what was the topic of this live call, okay? I'm practical. I plan everything out. Action people are the, are the people who want to do just things, for example, Right now they're thinking, all right, let's go out and eat something at this restaurant, okay, without any planning, right? These are action people. Social people are the people that for no reason, they start to make connections with people. No reason, no business reason, no friendship, no relationship, nothing. They're just somewhere maybe in a row waiting to get, for example, something. They start to talking with they start talking with people. Okay, these are social people. And emotional people are the people who do who make decisions mostly um, on emotional features. And I'm not talking about, for example, you say, all right, I'm an emotional person. I cry a lot when I watch a romantic movie. I'm not talking about that. You want to do something, for example, Tesla, Tesla Motors. They sell electric cars. Most of their customers are emotional. Why? Because the car is not harming the environment, okay? It's not harming the earth. It's not polluting the air, right? So what kind of people are the target? Emotional. Now, this is very important when you want to do marketing. So that gym, it was a very expensive gym, very high quality, and People who have plans, they come there. So their target was practical people. Same as me, right? So I was the right target for them. That was, I went, that was the reason that I went there, okay? And what happened? The thing that I want to tell you, it's very important. It, it will show you what kind of strategies to use and what type of people. Now, we have a marketing cognitive bias, which name is scarcity. Right? Scarcity. 
Now, scarcity is urgency, right? I can buy this product, uh, the sale is gonna end in, for example, one hour, right? Oh, it's gonna end, I'm gonna do it. So he used scarcity on me. Well, I have also, scarcity is extremely powerful on action people because they will make the decision right at the moment, right? He used uh, a scarcity, well, a little it's okay. All right, I understand that there's a discount right now that if I use the discount, it will be better. I'm gonna get a lot of more rewards if I just make the decision right now. But the problem is that if you push and add force on practical people, you are not gonna get result. And in fact, it's going to give you a negative result. So if you push practical people, if you push them so hard, add pressure on them, that hey, it's gonna end, hey, do this, hey, well, it's up to you, you make the decision, but if you don't, for example, take this offer, you're gonna regret it for the rest of your life, and so on, and so on, and so on. If you put pressure on practical people, you get nothing, right? The deal is off. They will go away, they will walk away. For practical people, you have to show facts, okay? Show them documents, results, case studies, proven things, okay? The more you show them, the more successful you will be to convince them. And if you want to convince action people, use a scarcity, put pressure on them. Hey, it's gonna end. That guy in that gym, the general manager, had no idea about this. That's why that day he failed to convince me and my wife. We are both practical. He failed that to make $2,000 in that day, right? So that was the reason that I want to share it with you because it's important. A lot of people don't know about it. I want you to benefit it from this. Um, strategies sometimes you you think you are doing it the right way all right I'm using a scarcity I'm pushing them okay this product is gonna last uh, it's gonna end uh, soon if you don't use it but you're actually doing it on practical people and it's not gonna work it I'm not saying don't use it at all because all of us has all of these four inside our, ourselves but don't push it okay don't uh, add a lot of pressure on practical people. You wanna add pressure? Do it here, right? So, in general, that was what, we, what I wanted to talk about in this live call. If you have any question, write it down for me so um, we can discuss it. If not, on the next live call, on the next week, we are going to talk about something that I think most of you will love it. Um, a lot of people asked me about it, so that's why I decided to put it on the next live call, and that is Slider Revolution 6. Do you see it? The marker is not writing good. Slider Revolution 6. They updated this plugin a couple of months ago. The whole interface changed. Uh, the way how you have to work with it has changed. So in the next week, we are going to talk about slider revolution on WordPress. So you can have, uh, so you learn how you can use it and uh, get better results. And after that, for the next book that we have to talk about, and please, I'm doing this for you. Okay, I know this stuff. If I want to do them, if I want to learn them or practice them, I can do it in a very short time. I don't need all this setup. So these live calls is not just for me, okay? It's for you. So please spend some time, get these books if you can, if you have the ability to get these books or read more about them, find some reviews. At least you can read some reviews about them to get the idea of what this book is about. So, and then, not next week, the, next, the week after that, two weeks from now, we are gonna talk about the book. Uh, building your brand story. See this? Um, building your brand story, I don't remember the author. 
but you search it on Google, you'll find it. Um, it's an amazing book, extremely powerful, talks about a lot of important elements, features, and strategies that can help you a lot in marketing, right? So that was all for this live call. And if you have any question, write it down for me. We will take a look at it, uh, both on YouTube and my own website. If not, let's end this session. Let me see how much delay it has. All right. So, if not, that was all I think, all right? All right, uh, I'm gonna answer the questions, all right. We have something. I wanted to answer the question after the live call. So, very interesting topic. Do you know about balance between pressure to buy, buy now, and reference facts, etc.? For practical people. And are there part from ultimate? Okay. So, uh, Gerard is asking if. I read the name right. Gerard is asking about the balance between using pressure and facts for these people. Now, if you want to use pressure, uh, it depends on your target, okay? It depends who is your custom, who is your audience, right? Who's your customer? Uh, and how you can understand that based on the product you are selling, right? For example, if you have a bar, if you have a club, for example, that starts uh, the, the event to start, for example, at 10 p.m. on up to, for example, 3 a.m. This is not, your target is not practical people. Practical people at that time, they're asleep. So the best way to do that, to learn more about practical people, action people, social people, and emotional people. For example, for the bar example, your target is social people, okay? Because they come there, they want to meet people. They, come, they want to meet their friends, they want to meet new people and uh, start new relations, right? One of the main reasons that people go to clubs or bars is to meet people. So your target is social people. So it's important to know who is your target. And based on that, you can act. So about the balance here, you can use, if for example, let's say your target is practical people, use a little scarcity, okay? It's okay, use some, but don't push it too hard. There is no, for example, numbers that I can give you, okay? Use it here and there. Uh, use it, for example, use a scarcity three times in a page. There's no number like that. But don't push it so hard, especially if you're doing it on pers in, uh, in person, seeing the customer, for example, uh, what we talked about it, the gym example. The general manager is literally killing himself to just add the pressure. What, what he did, for example, some of the sentences that comes to my mind right now, Okay, if you don't, for example, right now we have a discount. This is just right now, it's going to end uh, maybe in less than a couple of hours it finished. And uh, this is one time he used the scarcity. Again, he said, all right, if you want to do, for example, you want to exercise and have a better body, you have to act now, you have to think about it. Uh, later, it's, it will be gone. And, he used this over and over, maybe five or six times, which it was, it was getting annoying for us because we were practical people. And after that, we said, all right, right now we are not ready and we want to think about it, okay? Beside, instead of uh, sticking to the plan that, all right, uh, that's okay. For example, can I have your email? And uh, if you have any more offers, I will uh, send an email to you. Instead of doing these kind of things, he get a little bit angry and all right, uh, okay, uh, this is not the right way to do exercise. If you don't commit to it, if you don't do it, uh, you, for example, you can come next year. These were the sentences that he was telling us as a general manager to convince us. So if your target is practical, the more you show facts, the, it will be better, okay? There is no limit for it. Show facts, show case studies, documents, okay? until they say, right, that's enough, we are ready. If your uh, target is action, the more you use scarcity, the more you add pressure, 
uh, it's gonna be better. For example, if I was an action person and uh, the sentence, uh, those sentences of the general manager, no doubt I was convinced, no doubt. But I wasn't, I was practical. So in general, there isn't any specific number to show the balance. You have to get uh, familiar with it, you have to run some tests, and also you must know who your target is, all right? So, it was a great question. Um, let me check here. All right. Um, do you have any other questions here? So, if you write any, if you have any other question, you can write it down. I will respond to it in a couple of hours with text, or we can talk about it in the next live call, all right? So, that was all for this live session it was number four and the next one we are going to talk about slider revolution and then week after that build your brand story take this book read it and if you can right so i know some of you don't have access to these books you live in some other countries it's not like that you go out there in the bookstore and buy it or order it online but if you can this is a very amazing book for marketing so that was all if you have any question, write it down for me and I will see you in the next VIP call on next week, Tuesday at 6 a.m. GMT. See you on the next week.